Well, hey everybody, this is Ross. In today's video, we're gonna talk about girdling fig trees. And uh, I think this is a pretty interesting technique that we may want to try more of. And I recently read a study that made a pretty good convincing argument that girdling fig trees not only increases the fruit size, but the fruit quantity, and also the bricks, the sugar content of the fruits, which is really, quite interesting in itself. I had thought maybe we could do this for a different reason before I had read the study, but I'll put a link to that study down in the description of the video, and you guys can read through that. But what we see here, actually in the middle of the screen, is a girdle that we put on. See that brown wood? There's a ring around that brown wood that is exposed. We removed about a five millimeter ring of bark and cambium away from the trunk of the tree. Again, exposing that hardwood. And what you'll see on the right is the new growth, and also in the top, the top right is the new growth. Um, and I chose to do this on the brown wood, the older wood. We'll get into the reasons for that in a minute. But I wanna explain to you guys in this video a couple things. You know, first off, why are we doing this uh, beyond the study? Because I have a, my own little theory on this. Um, you know, when are we doing this? How do you do this? Um, just in general thoughts on this particular topic. So um, girdling, as I said, a lot of us have probably already done it, right? It's the first step in putting on an air layer. We take off the bark, we take off the cambium, expose the hardwood, and then we put the soil around the tree, around the trunk. Um, so a lot of us, whether you've known it or not, again, have already done this and I think it'll make this technique or this video here make a lot more sense, right? Um, so when we do girdling, what we're really doing is removing something called the phloem. And if you guys look up the anatomy of trees and the, the anatomy of branches, and you look at the different layers and the different names of these, of these different layers, you'll find that there's something called the phloem and there's something called the xylem. And both of these do different things. They transport materials up and down the tree for the overall health of the tree. Now the phloem is one that's really important because that's the one that's removed when you girdle a tree. And um, if you remove that, you are essentially stopping the carbohydrates that are being formed in these leaves, right? The leaves act as a form of photosynthesis and they produce carbohydrates. Those carbohydrates go from the leaves to the branches, to the trunk, and they flow downwards all the way into the roots. And they actually give some energy, some carbohydrates to the roots, so the roots can grow. Um, now, if we're gonna remove the phloem, right, we have to remove the bark, the cambium, and that pretty much removes that phloem. So now, what we've done here, by removing the phloem, by doing the girdle, we have stopped the carbohydrate flow from the photosynthesis. So now these leaves are producing photosynthesis. The leaves are then sending the energy down, but they're realizing, oh wait, I can't send the carbohydrates down any further because the phloem has been cut off. And therefore the roots are, are not getting um, the carbohydrates from this particular branch that I've girdled here. And instead it's being trapped in this branch. And therefore, what they did in the study is they measured the amount of carbohydrates in the branches that they girdled versus the branches that they didn't, or the trees that they girdled versus the trees that they didn't. And the trees that got girdled had way more carbohydrates than not, therefore resulting in a higher fruit size, higher quantity of fruits, and a sweeter fruit, meaning higher bricks. So I thought that was pretty interesting and it makes a lot of sense. It makes logically, it makes sense. Scientifically, it makes sense. Um, I thought about doing that for this purpose um, on maybe some of my potted trees because we've done that before, right? We've girdled our potted trees and we've put on air layers. And if I can get higher fruit quantity, size and bricks, why not, right? I think it's a pretty interesting thing to do. However, I'm not really sold on a weak tree such as our potted tree, 
you know, that doesn't have a whole lot of nutrients, doesn't have a whole lot of roots to really go out and grow, would that be really the greatest idea to girdle the entire trunk of the tree? Maybe you could, you could girdle a scaffold or maybe a couple of the fruiting branches. Um, but if you were to do the entire trunk of the tree, I'm not sure if that really would be a great idea uh, for the overall health of the tree because it's in a pot, because it's not as strong. Um, you know, a lot of you guys are probably gonna comment down below in the, in the comments. I'm gonna get it at some point here that some people are gonna be very paranoid and say, oh, Ross, be careful. You could kill your tree by girdling. Well, you can, obviously, but there's a little bit of a distinction here because let me explain what the xylem is really quickly. The xylem, instead of the, the phloem, right? The phloem is responsible for the carbohydrates and the hormones. So the hormones and the carbohydrates flow up and down in the phloem, right? Nicely named. The xylem is responsible for the nutrients and the water. So if you remove the xylem, which is much deeper, if you make deeper cuts, which is near the hardwood, um, I don't exactly know where it is on a fig, but I'll tell you, if you go too deep and you cut out the xylem, you're gonna kill your tree because you're not gonna have the water and nutrients that the roots are uptaking to then be put into these branches. So it's kind of um, a little bit tricky, but as we all know, we've done this so many times on our air layers that we've never killed our tree. However, I would be very reluctant to do this technique on something that is kind of weak, like a potted tree. I'd rather do it on an in-ground tree and usually a single stemmed trunk of an in-ground tree. I think that's probably where you would get the most bang for your buck. Now. Um, I'm doing this, however, having said all the things I've just said, I'm doing this for a different reason. At least I'm experimenting with this for a different reason. And it doesn't really look all that promising just yet. We did our girdles maybe a week and a half ago on some of these branches, just different select trees, select branches. And the reason for that was that I really wanted to see if I could get the hormones right within the tree. Um, as probably a lot of you guys know, if we cut our trees down too far, we make too much cuts in the wintertime, right? Because if you think about what is the biggest impact on the hormones of the tree that we as the grower can do? Well, if we come in here in the wintertime and we do a lot of pruning, even in the summertime, that affects the, the hormones of the tree. Any pruning whatsoever is going to change the hormones within the tree. And the reason for that is that there's two main hormones that we can think about. There's the auxin, which is produced at the tips of the plant. And it's in the most quantity, the highest quantity at the tips, which is then suppressing the lower growth. That's how we get dominance on these branches, how we get our branches to grow instead of all branching out all the time. Um, so if we have the, the auxin there, it's then traveling downwards through the phloem and actually going all the way down into the, the trunk, all the way down into the roots, and all the way to the ends of the roots. And at the end of the roots, there is another hormone. And that hormone's called the cytokine. And the cytokine is being produced at the end of the roots. So that's why it's in the highest quantity there, and the auxin's at the highest quantity at the tops of the tree on the growth tips. So they kind of fight each other, right? The cytokines then go from the roots all the way up to the top of the tree. And they kind of meet each other and they're in some sort of balance, they're in some sort of ratio. Maybe one is higher than the other, maybe one of them has a higher quantity of that hormone within the tree, within the plant, whatever it is. Um, but if you get that right balance, that right sweet spot, by getting the right amount of pruning, or even not really any pruning at all, we may have better results the following seasons with fruiting. And if you guys know anything about how I've been growing these figs here in this particular way, is we cut them back every fall. We're gonna cut them back to six to 12 inches. And then in the spring, we cover them with low tunnels and they get off to a really nice head start and they actually do really well like that. The only issue and the big issue with that is that when you cut a fig tree really low like that because these guys are coming back really strong i had some trees last year that were at the top of this uh this house here which is about eight feet tall 
if you cut them back from that height all the way down to a foot, that's about seven in, seven feet of growth. If you're taking off, and I would argue, if you're taking off more than four inches of growth, I would consider that a lot of pruning, heavy pruning for figs. And it's not just um, on all the varieties. I would say specific varieties can definitely handle this kind of pruning way better than others. And I'm seeing that now because we have so much different genetic diversity here in the yard when pruning them like this. You can see that some definitely respond a lot better than others. And it seems like maybe some just have that right hormonal balance regardless really of what you do to them, which is really nice. And that's something I may have to transition over to with this style of planting them and growing them. Um, but as an example here, if we are um, you know, gonna be cutting them back like that, I need to solve that issue because some varieties just may never respond well to that kind of pruning. And maybe it is the hormones, maybe it's not the hormones, maybe it's something else, but I'll tell you right now, um, I think girdling has a decent shot. It's, I'm not really all that hopeful just yet, but I think girdling may have some sort of decent shot here at having some good results. And the reason for that is I mentioned that the hormones flow in the phloem. So if we disrupt the phloem, we disrupt the flow of hormones. If we change the hormones within the plant, we have a much better chance of potentially having the right balance of hormones um, and getting our trees to fruit rather than grow. And I, you know, I've seen this guys in the past uh, with pinching and pinching does change up the hormones as well and some of the trees that were just growing and growing and growing by just taking off the tips it kind of got those hormones just a little push and then that new growth that came up after we pinched then actually had those fruit buds present so it's quite interesting and uh, I hope everybody out there maybe is a little inspired I don't think this is going to be something that everybody's going to want to do and again we need to experiment with this we need to really see um, if this really is going to work and what are the benefits i think that study is pretty sound if you ask me so go down in the description guys and take, take a read and look through that please if you enjoyed this one uh if you felt inspired in any way let me know down in the comments um, and please subscribe check out our blog figboss.com we have some information i think on there we did a post on girdling as well. So thank you guys here so much for watching. We'll see everybody soon. Take care.